Welcome and good afternoon. This is Margaret Martin with Talking with Margaret and today we're going to be talking about protective chatter. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what that really is in just a moment. But I want to welcome you for those who are listening live. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, invite you to call in at 347-838-8834. And we can take your calls and comments, and we're on the air till about uh, twelve, about twelve fifty-five, so Eastern Daylight Time. So I invite you to call in today. As I say, we're talking about protective chatter. But to tell you a little bit about me, I am Margaret Martin, and I've recently published a book called "The Chatter That Matters: Your Words Are Your Power." And in April and May, we're digging down into the book and having some discussion about the various sections of it. <clears throat> um, as one of the ways you can contact me is through my website, margaretmartin.com. And then um, I'm a coach, a life coach, as well as a career coach. I help people. Um, find that passion of the job they're looking for and help them understand how to go about their job search. I'm also a speaker and a trainer. I provide keynote presentations as well as um, training programs for organizations. And uh, as an author, obviously, as I said, but one of the things I want you to know mostly about me is my whole goal and mission is to help people make positive change. And that's one of the reasons I've decided to do the blog talk radio and try to focus on something that is positive that can help you with your particular situation being whatever it is. <clears throat> so today we're talking about protective chatter. And what does that mean? That means to protect yourself from the negativity of other people. <clears throat> As you know, there are a lot of people in this world that seem to have a negative attitude and they carry this negative energy about them. Some of them are their intention is to create harm. I, I don't understand why, but that is what their their intention is. In the meantime, what can you do to protect yourself from the negativity of others? <clears throat> and I'll give you some examples, for instance. Sometimes you get a phone call from someone you know. Maybe it's a neighbor you're having difficulty with, or um, an ex-spouse, or whatever it is. There are different situations, or someone in your office that continues to interrupt you in the middle of your work uh, for really no apparent or no no uh, specific reason that is related to work. Uh, but in other words, they don't need to interrupt you constantly to update you about minor stuff or their health or whatever it is. So one of the things that uh, I suggest is you learn to set a boundary. And of course, a boundary is just like you would think with a, a fence. It's a an invisible fence or a bubble or whatever it is you want to call it to protect yourself from the negativity of others. In my experience, I've had a situation or two where I've had to give, put, set boundaries with people. Sometimes it's been from abusive phone calls. Uh, in the book, I talk about a situation that happened when I was, uh, the town home I live in went through a major renovation several years ago. <clears throat> and during that time, I was president of the Homeowners Association, and needless to say, a lot of people weren't happy a lot of the time. So I had to field some of the phone calls to help people understand the process we were going through and try to keep them updated so that that they were aware as the construction continued from one building to the next and all the various phases and stages of what we were going through. But I had one situation where uh, one of the homeowners called me. He was quite upset with a particular situation we had to put um, in place with the children. And when you live in a complex that is um, has a small amount of play area for the children in the first place, and then you make it a construction area, a construction zone, so there's no play to be had, uh, on the grounds and uh, it makes it really challenging for all of us and especially the children and of course a construction trailer and all the supplies uh, is a great magnet for them. So anyway we had put in a, a some guidelines about 
<clears throat> the importance of keeping your children aware that they shouldn't be playing in there. So anyway, this guy calls me up and he is ranting and raving and I stopped him. I stopped him mid-sentence and said, look, if you want to talk about this in a civil manner, I'll be happy to listen to what you're going to say. But I don't take abusive phone calls. I don't take abusive talk to me under any circumstances. So if you continue, I'm going to hang up the phone. If you want to continue talking in a nice voice, I'll be happy to listen. It's up to you. He continued in his ranting and raving, and I said, I just want you to know I'm hanging up the phone now. And I hung up the phone. He did this a couple of times, and um, I would hang up the phone. I would, I would issue the boundary. You know, you're talking to me rudely. You know I don't accept that type of conversation, and I'm going to hang up if you continue. And so once you've established what your rule is or what your situation is, <clears throat> and then you advise them of the action you're going to take, and then you warn them one more, give them a chance to change the way they're handling things, and then issue that consequence and saying, I'm hanging up the phone now. Well, as happened in, with him and a couple of other people along the way, they find your email address, or even before email, I had a situation where the person just needed to rant and rave and put me down for whatever reasons they needed, so they actually wrote all this stuff out and sent it to me in a letter. But this guy would uh, that I'm re referencing would send me emails. Now, I had not provided the homeowners with my email address, but being a public person, I have a website, margaretmartin.com. You can get my email address there and email me. So he had done that. Well, as it turned out, we had to take even further steps and set further boundaries with him. And the, so, because it just was abusive. It was not, not a good thing. So the attorney stepped in and wrote him a letter and said, the only way you can communicate with he with Margaret and the property manager he started doing the same thing to the property manager is to write what your concerns are down and put it in the communication box that's provided for the construction issues and the good news is that even through all of that trying time still living in the same community this this gentleman and I uh, still live here and we're actually on very good speaking terms have good conversations from time to time so you know for a period of time I'm sure he was quite angry with me because of the of me setting the boundary uh, that happens when you set boundaries so one of the things you want to make sure that you do when you're setting a boundary is to not put yourself in harm's way if I had had any concern this guy would harm me physically, I would have certainly advised our attorney. I would have advised uh, the police. I would have I would have made sure I was protected. So uh, so if you or have a situation where the person you have to set a, a boundary with is potentially violent, make sure you reach out for help. We have so many organizations around throughout the world, throughout the country, throughout our towns that have that are there to help you. They are there to um, to provide that support and guide you how to really deal with someone in that situation. We have the domestic violence hotline. It's easy to find on your by doing a quick Google search, it might be a good thing. If you're in one of those types of relationships, it might be a good number to store in your phone. Also, your 911. Um, these people are here to help. And the thing about it is that I want you to remind people is you may think that, oh, you know, if I need help from a friend or a neighbor, they probably won't help. Or you'll feel embarrassed. Don't let pride, don't let your ego, don't let anything get in the way of asking for help because put the put yourself in the other situation if you knew of a friend or a neighbor who was going through a difficult time and they they could have asked for ask you for help and you would have done everything you could to help them but they didn't call and then they got hurt they got beat up or any kinds of other things that may have happened so Remember, people are here. We are all here to help each other. And, you know, just ask. 
and and people and I'm sure you will find that support you know as I said in our particular area I live in Clearwater Florida we happen to have uh, the Haven which is our domestic domestic violence center they have a hotline they have people on on that line 24 hours a day there's a nationwide number as well so there are many many resources for you so don't ever put yourself in harm's way when it comes to um, setting boundaries with people the uh, again wanted to tell you about give you the steps of um, setting a boundary so basically there are four simple steps <clears throat> one is determine if you need to set the boundary if someone is being abusive if someone is annoying you um, unnecessarily in your workplace um, another example I had uh, in a previous job I had years ago um, uh, there were four of us in the office so very small office and this one woman had had a bad accident and she was in a fair amount of physical pain but and the problem was is she came in she drove in a couple, about an hour every day to work and then when she got there she spent 45 minutes updating us all on what had happened with her health over and how much pain she was in and basically it was the same information day in and day out well I worked part-time I didn't work a full day so I had to make every moment I was at work count and so finally I went to the boss and I said hey boss who was actually a good friend of mine and said look this woman is annoying the heck out of me she's taking up my valuable time it's the same story every day and frankly I'm tired of listening to it will you please ask her not to do that and so I gave him several days and then I went back and I said are you going to take care of this are you going to ask her to quit telling me taking up my time every day to you know so I can be more productive at work you know I'm sorry she's in pain but there's really nothing I can do and I really don't want to listen to this so I said if you don't take care of it you know I will and so needless to say since he knew I would take care of it he took the easy way out and let me do it so one day I waited till everybody just she and I were in the office everybody else was gone to lunch and I went to her and I said look I really am sorry you have so much pain and 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 that you're not being able to re get this resolved but I need to ask you when you come in each day please don't spend 45 minutes updating me on how much pain you're in because it hasn't you know if it hasn't changed if there's nothing I can do to help you it doesn't help you it doesn't help me and I really need to be as productive as I can so I'm going to ask you nicely to just if if you need to update me I'm happy to help in any way I can I, you know it's not that I'm I'm not caring so as can happen she didn't take that very well and we actually sat in the same office space we had a big room and our desk were diagonally across the room from each other so you know that obviously created a dicey situation but uh, so you know it's amazing how immature some people can be when you've asked them very nicely and as professionally as you can to not not annoy you so she would pause in front of my desk on her way to get a cup of coffee or something and say well I would update and I would I would talk with Margaret but she's told me I can't talk to her and I looked at her and I said you know that's not what I said what I said is I didn't want to hear every day about the same level of pain you're in as compared to yesterday and I said that's inappropriate well she kept doing that day in and day out so after about about a, a month I went to the to the owner I said look either you're gonna take care of this or I'm gonna quit because I can't I'm not I can take it but I am not gonna take in this kind of environment I don't take abuse verbal abuse from anyone and I'm certainly not gonna take it from her and she's being verbally abusive so you know really a couple of weeks passed and I gave my notice I ended up continuing to do the bookkeeping side of the business for him but I came in in the hours that were appropriate for me he put me in a different room so I didn't have to deal with her 
So, you know, it was a win-win in the long run because I got out to do focus more time on my coaching and speaking business, which was what I really wanted to do, and the minor time on doing bookkeeping for him. So do realize that there can be some interesting consequences or results that show up when you issue consequences. So try to analyze it as best you can and talk with your boss or talk with someone else that a friend that can help you and give you some guidance or or call a coach or, or a counselor that can help you with this situation. And again, it's looking at and realizing you need to set a boundary step with someone. And then the second step is when, when the person crosses the line or crosses the boundary, does what you've been, you've decided that you're not going to put up with anymore and that you advise them, you know, I've asked you that not to, um, I'm asking you not to talk to me in that manner. I'm asking you not to call me after 9 o'clock at night. I like to try to get into bed early or whatever it is, the boundary you need to set. So, and then when that, when that happens, again, you give them a warning and let them know, look, you know, I've asked you not to do this. And I really would appreciate your respecting my wishes. I, and, and then issue that consequence take your action. So those are the simple four steps um, <clears throat> to determine you need to set a boundary, advise them what it is, warn them as when they cross the boundary that you're going to take the action step, whatever that is, and then take your action step. And then look at what the what results of the consequences may show up. I had a situation years ago with one of my clients who's um, who needed to set some boundaries with her mother because her mother expected her to be at her beck and call at all times. And this one was a businesswoman. She didn't have time in her day to interrupt her day three or you know, to run errands for her mom or take her mom to run errands. So it was it was some rough weeks, but we I helped her establish which boundaries she needed, how she was gonna go about doing that. And yes, her mother got upset. She got a little bit pouty. She got a little bit difficult. But my my client was was strong. Let her know her let her mother know she loved her and cared for her, and that she would be available during these particular hours to help her. And that way, if if you set a structure for somebody that's trying to use your time all the time or wants to interrupt you in your work, if you can let them know time frames of when it's a good time to come and talk to you or when you can be there to help them, it's, it's learning, you know, in communication and time management how you can handle those things. So think about that from that point of view. But I want to caution you once again, never, 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 ever put yourself in harm's way that it is um, it is just you're there to protect yourself and your family but spe but specifically yourself and one of the things I share with people when they are um, in a presentation as we're talking about this I, t I remind them that people will talk to you and people will treat you as you allow them so keep that in mind we allow people to treat them, treat us, the way they do. We allow people to talk to us in the manner in which they do. So it's stepping back and looking at that with a different perspective and saying, hey, you know what? I need to take care of me. I need to own my power. Take care of me. And, and you know, I will be open to working with any of you who want to call me um, in my office. I'll give you a five, five or ten minutes. We'll talk through something and help you structure some way. If you want to, to schedule some, some coaching around that, happy to work with you on that. So know that you're not alone out there, that people are there to help. I'm sure an attorney could help you even. So look at that to see, do some research to see as you're getting ready to do this, to see who can help you, who's willing to help you. They're coaches, they're counselors, they're healers, they're 
all kinds of different ways of finding that help. So reach out. Reach out to help and ask for help. And when someone asks you for help, be sure that you're willing to do that. And if you are not, let them know so that they don't count on you. And let them know why. Because if, it, if you feel it may set you vulnerable in a difficult situation, yeah, you do need to protect yourself. So offer them uh, a suggestion of someone else or, or an organization they can call. So don't leave them hanging. Try to, try to help them work it out so that they are comfortable. Because that's what you would like if you were reaching out to someone is to say, and, and they, they said, you know, I feel a little uncomfortable doing this, but here, maybe let's, let's look together and see what organization or what somebody that can help you with this process. So make sure that you, that you do take time to do that. Do a little research. Don't just jump the gun and do this without thinking it through, because that can result in some, some maybe some difficult situations for you at work, at home, and we need to set boundaries with folks in our in our home life as well. You know, whether it's a spouse or a significant other, sometimes it's children in the manner in which they talk to us, and maybe children in the manner in, we, in which we talk to them. And so, you know, it's being respectful. It's being taken care of yourself, owning your own power. So again, if you'd like to uh, talk with me about this, Feel free to contact me. You'll find my information at margaretmartin.com. And um, there's more information about this on in the book, of course. The Chatter That Matters, Your Words Are Your Power. You can find that at my website as well as on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble's websites, uh, on the um, Books A Million. I think it's also on iTunes um, or iBooks. So it's out there in a lot of different places. I'm not sure all of where the publisher has put it. So uh, you can download it as an ebook or, or purchase the soft cover. If you want a signed copy, one of the best ways to do that is to email me and let me know. We'll set that up through a PayPal or you can send me a check and let me know who you want to um, me to sign it for. I've done that for several people. It's sort of fun and they, they like getting the signed copy. So, Thank you so much for listening, and be sure and share the, the link. I'll be posting that on my Facebook page. I invite you to join me there as well, uh, and join me at um, on my Twitter. And all of those links are, are provided here on Blog Talk Radio's website, as well as on my website. I'll look forward to talking with you next week. We'll be talking a little bit about, I think, integrity and responsibility next week. So I look forward to talking with you then. And feel free, again, to reach, reach out and contact me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And take good care. We'll be talking to you next week. Mm -hmm.